Continuing the discussion of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's Prakrita Rasa Shatta Dushani, a hundred refutations of mundane mellows. Today I'm going to give the third session on one line of this poem of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's Joro Rasa Gane Kobu Shreya Keho Labena. No one ever attained Shreya, the ultimate benefit, by singing mundane love songs. My translation. In the previous talk, I mentioned Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's, one of his many, many compositions, the Rupanuga Bhajan Darpan, which can be translated as a mirror to see the path of devotional service following in the line of Rupa Goswami. Pertinent to this subject of love songs, love poems, real ones, which are connected with Krishna and mundane ones. I'll read an extract from this Rupa Noga Bhajan Dorpan. Real love songs are in connection with Krishna and are in line with the proper understanding of Krishna that is derived from Rupa Goswami and maybe from other Acharyas also, but especially we in the Gorya line follow Rupa Goswami. And mundane love songs are those in which the Vishai and the Ashrai, the object of love and the, the person who loves, are mundane. The feelings, though they may appear to be very similar, are mundane. The underlying motive on the part of both the lover and the loved. Of course, in some cases, there's only the loved, but the one person is loved by another, but that isn't reciprocated. Uh, the, the underlying motive, although it may not be very obvious to all participants, but the transcendental science of rasa, which is really psychology, Vedic psychology deals with, in this mundane world, deal, deals with Kam, Krod, Loba, Mohamada, Matsarya, mm. this uh, Swarup, Vismriti, all these things, lust, greed, anger, pride, envy, illusion, Swarup, Vibrahma can also be called, uh, mistaken understanding of one's actual position, spiritual position. Then ahankar is a well-known word, that the consciousness by which one forms one's identification with oneself as I. And then abhiman, the abhiman can have different meanings. Uh, how one perceives oneself, uh, one's whole mindset. Uh, so these are the subject matters of Vedic psychology, but as we go higher and higher and higher, and it's rasa. And that's there in the mundane level also, the, the exchanges, the feeling, the emotions, the sensations, especially we're inter interested with bhakti rasa, that which comes about in relation with Krishna and his devotees. So the mundane rasa can also be generated from songs about Krishna, which are either non bona fide songs, such as we were discussing in the last session, those songs which are 
composed by people who don't have a proper knowledge of the science of rasa or the, even the, the tattvagyam, the proper understanding of Krishna, who he is. And it may be that mundane rasa is also produced from bona fide souls, but the or bona fide rasa bona fide recitations of Krishna, just like there are so many speakers on Srimad Bhagavatam. But Sanatana Goswami warns us, Avaishnava mukhud girnam putam harikatam ritam, shravana naiva karatavya sarpo chishta yatha paya. Be careful, he says. He warns not to hear even the bona fide recitations of Shastra, such as Srimad Bhagavatam. Don't hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Don't hear the nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam if it's by a person who's not a proper Vaishnava or an Avaishnava, because doing so will be similar to drinking milk, which is the remnants of milk, which have been part of which has been drunk by a poisonous snake it looks like milk, it might seem to taste like milk, but instead of getting the nourishment of milk, one will be poisoned. So in the same way, we have to be very careful about hearing even bona fide Krishna Kata or singing bona fide songs or even singing, even singing the Hare Krishna mantra or even hearing the Hare Krishna mantra sung by people who are not properly situated in devotional service. So... Yeah, I was going to read from Rupanuga Bhajan Darpan. I'll do that now. But you know, Thakur says, Rupanuga Tattasha Bhujite Akankaja Roshagyan Ta Prayojan Chinmoy Ananda Rosh Sharbat Tatta Jar Bosh Akanda Param Tatta Dhan Rupanuga Tatta this means the subject matter of those who follow in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami. So, Bhakti Thakur says, someone who is eager to understand what is the essence of the teachings of Rupa Goswami, understanding that my real need is to understand rasa jnana, what, what, what is the subject matter of rasa. Chinmoy ananda rasa sharva tatta jarbosh. Now, the spiritual blissful rasa, ananda chinmaya rasa, all philosophical understandings are subservient to this. If we don't get up there, if, if we don't see through the eyes or see through the mirror of Rupanuga Bhajan Darpan, then what's going to happen? If we if we won't understand this the teachings of Rupa Goswami about rasa, it's not just, we won't understand simply by mental effort, but when we're blessed with the, the realization, the bliss, as much as we are blissed, as much as we are blessed, that much we can be blissed. Akonda parama tattadham, which is the indivisible, Eternal, um, not mixed with any unalloyed, highest treasure of philosophical understanding. I'm just trying to translate it. Really, all these terms, they're not fully translatable. English wasn't meant for rasa gyana. Sanskrit, Bengali, yes. English, no. J. Rasha Prapanchagata Jara Kabe Prakashita Param Rasha Ashan Murti. Ashan Murti Anitahoi 
আদারশায়রা ছায়া হয় জেনা মারিচিকা জলস্ফূর্তি নাও হি ভক্তিবিনাথ ঠাকুর রিফ্লেক্টিং ওয়াট রূপ গোস্বামী সেজ সেজ দ্যাট দিস রাসেস when they enter the material world and are manifest through mundane poetry what is it it is the mm, asan murti it is the false representation it becomes a false representation of the actual highest rasa of the spiritual world but that false representation is temporary it's not the real thing it's like the shadow of a reflection or a, mir- a mirage of water in the desert now i'm going to read from some translations of love songs composed in uh, Bengali or Brajbuli, Maithili. These are the languages of the Vaishnav poets. Um, of course, as far as transcendental, yeah, these are transcendental love songs. And we have transcendental love songs very famously right there in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the gopis singing the Gopi Gita, and the Venu Gita. Uh, more recently, talking in terms of chronology as we understand it, uh, there have been songs in the vernacular languages which bring out in the pure hearts of the devotees who are absorbed in the Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, the spiritual, blissful rasa of Raja, they have entrance into the psychology, into the feelings of Radha and Krishna. This is no small thing and definitely not to be imitated. And definitely you see, you don't see, I, I have seen these cheap Bengali dramas in which they have Radha and Krishna and their love affairs and uh, they're only on the out they're on the surface at least they have some some idea of Radha and Krishna but really one has to follow the devotional line from Rupa Goswami to even begin to approach that properly anyway i'm going to read a few extracts from Srila Vishwanath Chakra Thakur's compilation of love songs or love poems, Kanada Gita Chintamani, which is uh, love songs about Radha and Krishna and praise of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, different songs he's compiled, including some of his own songs. So in that sense, it's something like Srila Rupa Goswami's Padabali, in which he's collected some poems from lesser known authors, mostly lesser known authors, put in a few poems of him by himself, a few poems by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mostly from Shikashtaka. So anyway, I'll read them and then we can have some idea of the love poems, which are actually the, the real wealth of the followers of Rupa Goswami, who are relishing such things. And afterwards, I want to read from some mundane poems, which sound very similar. Okay, so here's the first song. By These are Vaishnav poets. Uh, there, are, there are several well-known poets. Uh, Govinda Das, among the Vaishnav poets who compose so many songs. Well. Before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was Chandidas, Bidapati. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relished hearing their compositions. He also relished hearing the poems of Krishna Kanamrita, 
Krishna Karnamrita of Bilva Mangal Thakur. And he also relished hearing from Rai Ramananda his own composition, the Jagannath Balab Nartak. <clears throat> and then in the time after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were several famous Vaishnava poets. Govinda Das, very famous. Uh, well, specifically, I'm talking about those who wrote on Rasak. The, the Basu Ghosh wrote mostly about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so who did I say? I said Govinda Das, Uddhav Das, Jnana Das, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur himself. Uh, although he wrote under the pen name Hari Vallabh. Anyway, first of all, I'm going to read a translation of a song by Gyanadas in which he is seeing, revealing feelings of Radharani for Krishna. Through the realization of Gyanadas is expressed, Radha says, first I heard about him, Krishna, then I saw him. Seeing him, I became enchanted by him. Then I fell in love with him. I could not bear separation from him. Separated from him, I wept and wept. I felt that I was on the verge of death. Oh, Gopi friend, the demigod Brahma created everything else, but he did not create love. That's actually a fact, even from the point of view of Sankhya philosophy. We don't find Sankhya. In Sankhya, we have 24 elements or 25 if you want to be a theist, uh, but we don't find love. Love must have had a different creator, a creator who would not hear anything about piety or saintliness. So Radha is criticizing love. She says, everyone talks about love. Who says love is good? Love for this dark playboy, Krishna, is like someone who comes, punches you in the ribs, and then runs away. I think this love is like death. I think this love is like a great he heavy burden, a great disease, afflicted by this love, there's nothing else. You only know love. There's only love, 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 love. And it's, it's so bad. Why, when I saw this boy under a kadamba tree, did I have to fall in love with him? Gyanada says, if this girl renounces her love, of what will she talk? That's all she talks about. Notice that the name of Radha is not given in this song. The name of Krishna is not given in this song. It's understood. And then another song, which is from Krishna's side, as if in mm, as if in reply or in but it's written by Govinda Das. It's written by a different poet. Krishna speaking. When I saw the sweetness of her glorious lotus face, I was overcome. The playful snake of her raised eyebrow bit my heart. O gopi friend. You see Radha speaking to a gopi friend? Krishna also. It can be that the, the, the Radha is speaking or Krishna is speaking, but this song is Krishna speaking. It, it could be. Uh, o gopi friend, please listen. My heart is now plunged in a great ocean of passionate desire overcome I have now no power to swim to the shore. I'm thrown in the ocean of desire, but I'm just completely overcome and I, I can't swim. That means that there's no way I can get out of this ocean of such strong longing. She looked at me with crooked, laughing, sidelong glances. Does she love me? Is she indifferent to me? I am filled with doubts. So Radha says that, why did I fall in love with Krishna when I saw him? But Krishna's thinking, the way she looked at me, 
just completely overwhelm me. But did she really mean it? Am I imagining? This is not to be imitated, to, to write about the feelings of Radha and Krishna. This only comes from a realization which is a gift. My heart is tormented with pain, Krishna says. She must know my heart. I see that her heart is filled with kindness. Govinda Das is master, his heart filled with ever new love, certainly attained Radha. And ultimately, all these songs, they do end in Radha and Krishna meeting. Otherwise, the poet's heart would completely break. The whole universe would break. Now, who's qualified to even discuss these things? But we should do also for the reason that our Acharya, specifically both this and Sarasarak Thakur here, has told us, they've warned us to differentiate between the real love songs and the not re or the, the mundane love songs. So should we, know, we should know what the real is and what the real isn't. And also, we should know, as we struggle down here in the world of material desires and illusions and attachments, we should know there's something up there which is so high that we should, we must strive to attain it. We have no power to go there, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to take us there, qualified or not. Who's qualified? So we should know that also. Then a gopi messenger goes back from Krishna to Radha. And this is again a song by another author, Vidyapati. It is, yeah, so Vidyapati is also quoted in Kanada uh, Gita Chintamani. So the Gopi messenger says, it is Krishna. Oh Radha, it is Krishna who places this appeal before you. I have seen him. I've, I've seen him. I've just been with him. He's very wonderful. His face is enchanting. His reddish lips are like a blossoming lotus with a blossoming bandhuka flower. His eyes are like black bees. Bees so intoxicated by drinking honey that they have no power to fly away. You asked about his crooked ways. His kajal anointed eyes are crooked like Karmadev's bows. Radha's very full breasts and delicate body are like two great Mount Sumeru's above a flowering vine, Vidyapati says. The Gopi messenger's words did not arouse Radha's desire to enjoy with Krishna. So it's not so easy. It's not that Yes, there was a little tiff and then they made up and they lived happily ever after. Radha's, when she's in this mood of, of mana, of not wanting to submit to Krishna, she's angry with him. Very difficult to break. O oh, Madhava! Then again, the gopi messenger speaking to Krishna. O oh, Madhava, what shall I say to you? What can I do? I saw the graceful girl surrounded by her friends. Her form is graceful like a golden statue. Her beauty and virtues and intelligence have no peer in all the worlds. Her body has become very pale, like a waning moon. Day after day she becomes more thin and emaciated. Now she is like a slender crescent moon. Her cheek rests on her left hand. Her hair is tossed to and fro. She scratches the ground with her toenails. From her eyes flows a flood of tears. There's so many of these Vaishnav songs. 
There was a book compiled in 1903 by Jagabandhu Bhadra called Gora Pada Tarangani, which is a, a collection of more than 1,500 Vaishnava songs that he had personally collected by going village to village in the Bengal countryside. There's so many Vaishnava poets writing so many poems. It was very strong culture. Unfortunately, it, it was infiltrated with all kinds of upper Siddhantas and upper Sampradayas. But very, very strong culture. Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur, before him Bhaktivinoda, well, they were contemporary, of course. They, they sought to purify that culture, to get it back on track, on the right track. Janmadhyaya Saryataha. <clears throat> In the very be ah, everything comes from him. Everything rests in him. Everything, everything enters into him. So that can be understood, that Krishna's pastimes, they're all about love. He's born for the sake of love. He lives for the sake of love. And ultimately everything has to enter into his love. That's one way of, that's a, a rasamai way of understanding Janmadhyaya Sayataha. So from these songs we can get some insight into the intense feeling of love between Radha and Krishna and the intense feelings that the devotees, Uddhavdas, Gyanadas, Govindadas, Vidapati and others experience contemplating the loving feelings between Radha and Krishna. But what about mundane songs? There are so many mundane love songs, so many poetry and song. So much of it is about love. And there's so much feeling in them. It seems to be the same thing. It, it can move us to tears hearing love songs about mundane lovers, but it's meaningless because it's mundane love, which is not for Krishna. It's temporary. We think, I fully love someone, but we're forced apart by time. So love songs, they just trap us in material existence with an illusion of the real love, which seems so strong, so much feeling, but meaningless lyrics, in some cases, completely meaningless. There, there was one song, it's still popular today. It was, uh, when I was a kid, used to come on the radio all the time. A Wider Shade of Pale, which is sung with, great pathos, but the words have no particular meaning. <laughs> it's absurd. I'm going to read a few songs which are not about Krishna. Um, actually, they are about Krishna, but they're love songs. They should be about Krishna but it's misplaced love, full of feeling. Very similar to Radha and Krishna's pastimes, which is why in the last session, I quoted from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Yah Komara Haram, who to, he, the, the mundane lover who is pining for their lover, remembering in, the, in their youth. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was thinking of Radha and Krishna. So we can think of Radha and Krishna hearing mundane songs, but it's better to hear the songs which are actually about Radha and Krishna. 
because the mundane songs are composed by mundane people with mundane emotions, with no love for Krishna. But just see how some of them can really, they, they really reflect the love of Krishna. And that's why we have to be very careful to hear the songs that are actually about Radha and Krishna, because otherwise we'll end up with the Jada Rasha, the mundane sentiment, which is what Bhaktisthan Sarasvara Thakur is warning us about. It seems very much the same. For those who are not deep in understanding Rasha Tattva, the proper understanding of transcendental rasa as distinguished from mundane rasa. And what is the distinction? The distinction is Atendriya Priti Bancha Tare Bale Kam Krishnendriya Priti Vancha Dhare Premanam. Krishnendriya Priti Icha Dhare Premanam. The desire to satisfy one's own senses, which doesn't necessarily mean so, grossly, it can be very subtly also. Love is very much on the mental or emotional platform. It doesn't have to be the gross physical act of love, although the two are completely intertwined. Uh, so but it may be subtly that we're designed to satisfy our own senses, but love for Krishna means simply everything for Krishna. Tadarte akil. Tadarte kila cheshtitam, Krishnarte akila cheshtitam, everything for Krishna. So anyway, I'll read some songs. There's an appeal by Anne, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, Bronte is it? Bronte I think it's pronounced. She sings, or oh, it's poetry actually. I'm, oh, I am very weary, though tears no longer flow. My eyes are tired of weeping, my heart is sick of woe, my life is very lonely, my days pass heavily. I'm weary of repining, wilt thou not come to me? Oh, did, oh, didst thou know my longings for thee from day to day, my hopes so often blighted, thou wouldst not thus delay. It's archaic English. Here's from Hermann Hess, who's well known for his, uh, he's probably had a cult following in the 1960s and 1970s, a German author, cult following for his books, The Glass Bead, well, there were several of them. Uh, Glass Bead Game was very famous. Then I read that one he had, what was it called? Siddhartha. It's the only book I read of his, and I didn't like it at all. It was a completely impersonal conclusion. Anyway, here's a poem which is tra translated by James Wright from the German with the title, Without You. So here we go. My pillow gazes upon me at night, empty as a gravestone. I never thought it would be so bitter to be alone, not to lie down asleep in your hair. I lie alone in a silent house, the hanging lamp darkened, and gently stretch out my hands to gather in yours and softly press my warm mouth toward you and kiss myself, exhausted and weak. Then suddenly I'm awake, and all around me the cold night grows still. The star in the window shines clearly, where is your blonde hair? Where is your sweet mouth? Now I, now I drink pain in every delight and poison in every wine. I never knew it would be so bitter to be alone, alone without you. Reminds of the residents of Vrindavan after Krishna has gone. That seeing the places of Krishna's pastimes, which previously were places of great pleasure, have become very painful reminding of that pleasure which is no longer there. This is from Pablo Neruda, who wrote, I believe, in Spanish, many, many sonnets, love poems. He wrote, translated, of course, 
I don't love you as if you were the salt rose, topaz, or arrow of carnations that propagate fire. I love you as certain dark things are loved secretly between the shadow and the soul. I love you as the plant that doesn't bloom and carries hidden within itself the light of those flowers, and thanks to your love, darkly in my body lives the dense fragrance that rises from the earth. I love you without knowing how or when or from where. I love you simply without problems or pride. I love you in this way because I don't know any other way, way of loving but this in which there is no I or you so intimate that your hand upon my chest is my hand, so intimate that when I fall asleep it is your eyes that close. Hmm. He's really into it. <laughs> really into it. But it's Jara Rasa. It seems delightful. It is delightful, but it is the delight of the material energy. Another one from the same author. Don't go far off, not even for a day, because, because, I don't know how to say it, a day is long and I will be waiting for you like an empty train station when the trains are parked off somewhere else asleep. Don't go even for an hour because then the little drops of anguish will all run together. The smoke that wanders looking for a home will drift into me to kill my lost heart. Oh, may your silhouette never dissolve in the sand. May your eyelids never flutter into the empty distance. Don't leave me for a second, beloved, because in that moment you'll have gone so far. I'll wander the whole earth asking, will you come back or will you leave me dying? First of all, says, don't go even for a day, then don't go for an hour, then don't go for a second. These are the kind of feelings that lovers have. Of course, when they get married, <laughs> then the wife kicks her, get out of the house and earn some money. <laughs> Here's a traditional English ballad, one of many versions, which is called Barbara Allen. It's a, it's a heart jerker. Was in the merry month of May when all gay flowers were a-bloomin', sweet William on his deathbed lay for the love of Barbara Allen. He sent his servant to the town, to the place where she was dwelling, said, You must come to my master's house if your name be Barbara Allen. So slowly, slowly she gets up, and to his bedside going, she drew the curtains to one side and says, Young man, you're dying. I know I'm sick and very low, and sorrow dwells within me. No better, no better, I never will be till I have Barbara Allen. Don't you, remember, don't you remember last Saturday night when I was at the tavern? You gave your drinks to the ladies there, but you slighted Barbara Allen. He reached up his pale white hands, intending for her to touch her. She turned away from his bedside and says, Young man, I won't have you. His t he turned his cheek into the wall and burst it out a-crying, what I do to thee, I do to all, and I do to Barbara Allen. She had not walked and reached the town. She heard the death bells ringing, and as they rolled, they seemed to say, Hard-hearted Barbara Allen, O oh mother, O oh mother, go make my bed. Make it both long and narrow. Sweet William died for me today. I'll die for him tomorrow. Sweet William was buried in the old churchyard, and Barbara there anigh him. And out of his grave grew a red, red rose, and out of hers a briar. They grew and grew to the old churchyard where they couldn't grow no higher, and there they tied in a true love's knot the rose, the rose wrapped around the briar. So what's happening here? He loves Barbara Allen, but then at the pub one evening, he slights her, there's some kind of lover's tiff, and then she doesn't want to see him, and he's dying out of love for her, and at the last moment when he's only, he's about to die, he sends his servant to call her, 
she comes to see him and he says, I'm dying for love of you. And she said, yeah, but look at the way you behaved with me in the pub last week. And she refuses to have anything to do with him and leaves him. And then on the way back home, she hears the death bells. The, the way that bells are rung in the church means someone has died and understood that the man who loved her has died out of love for her. Then she goes home and says, Oh, he died today, so you make a deathbed for me and I'll die tomorrow. So then she was buried next to him and out of his grave, out of the, 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 the earth above his grave grew a rose bush and out of her grave next to it grew a, a briar, a thorny bush, and they grew up, they intertwined with each other and grew, 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 grew up and up in a love knot. Ah, <laughs> oh, sentimental. So there's the the bitter side of love is also reflected in mundane love poems. Here's from one of William Shakespeare's sonnets. Thy bosom is endeared with all hearts, which I, le which I by lacking have supposed dead, and there reigns love and all love's loving parts and all those friends which I thought buried. How many a holy and obsequious tear hath dear religious love stolen from mine eye, as interest of the dead which now appear, but things removed that hidden in thee lie. Thou art the grave where buried love doth live, hung with the trophies of my lovers gone, who in who all their parts of me to thee did give, that due of many now is thine alone. Their images I loved, I view in thee, and thou all they hast all the all of me. It needs someone to unpack it, but the thing, it's all about love. Love, 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 Beatles song. All you need is love, 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 love. It's talked about, it's sung about. They don't know what it is without Krishna. Here's a few lines from a song which I used to hear again and again and again, sung with great drama on the radio. In the 1960s, we used to hear the radio again and again and again sung. I can't live if living is without you. I can't live, I can't give any more. I can't live if living is without you. I can't live, I can't give any more. Just saying the same thing over and over. I can't live if living is without you. And sung with great feeling. But you know that the person who's singing it, he's a professional singer in a studio, singing the song because he's getting paid for it or they want to make some money out of it. It's not the real thing. So the, the whole gist of Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur's poem here is don't get fooled. Don't get fooled by mundane love. Mundane love ties us in the material world. And people in the material, materialistic people, if you speak badly about mundane love, they become very upset because that for them is the highest but it ties us up in this material world. Real love is for Krishna. There's a saying in English, and it's probably there in most other languages also in other ways. If you haven't loved, you haven't lived. In other words, the mundane love, even if it's very brief, you fall in love and then that euphoria of loving feeling which you have, and then that's how it happens in the West. You, you, you fall in love, then you, then you get married, and then the, just kind of the love goes down a bit. Now, that's how it used to be for generations. Nowadays, I don't know. There's so many strange things going on. So the Western world is really, really, really a big mess in terms of the whole 
emotional life of people in, in everything what marriage is, what family is, they're really, really, really messed up. But anyway, it used to be that people would fall in love and they get married and then for some time there's this euphoria of love which settles down very quickly after marriage as they have to get on with the practicalities of living together. Although the love may take a different form. But the saying is there, if you haven't loved, you haven't lived this feeling. It's mundane love and everyone knows it's, it's very brief, but they think it's worth living, even if it's only for a few days. That's the real essence of life. They're missing the love of Radha and Krishna. Romeo and Juliet chasing an impossible dream, which is not fulfilled or fulfillable, so they just die together and they think they'll join together. And I know what they're thinking. They'll join together in the afterlife or whatever. It's a tragedy, famous up to the present day. One thing I, I remember stuck in my mind, this is going back years, 40 years or something. When we were first in Dhaka in Bangladesh, we rented a house, which is our first ashram in Bangladesh, in Dhaka, this capital city. And our landlord, who spoke English very well, which wasn't common in Bangladesh in those days, uh, one time I was talking to him and he mentioned Greta Garbo and a look came on his face of s some deep feeling which I'd never, I'd never seen in him before. Greta Garbo was a, I believe, Hollywood film actress. She was Swedish. And yeah, very beautiful. Dead now, a long time ago. But the feeling he had for her by seeing her on... I doubt if he saw many films of her because you wouldn't get many Hollywood films in Bangladesh at that time at all. Bangladesh, when he was growing up, it was British India. Um... But the feeling he had, you could see the feeling, the, fe the feeling of some wistfulness or nostalgia. The f he had a great feeling, but he never knew her. <laughs> he, he knew the persona that she acted in various movies. And I didn't say, but I thought, this is absurd. I was, it's absurd. And I, I was surprised at how this, yeah, educated man, but he's so stupid. And everyone in the world is stupid like this, pining for some fantasy of love. And I was very thankful to Srila Prabhupada for having saved me from that. I haven't loved in that sense. I, I, well, I don't want to go too much into it. I've had crushes on girls when I was a kid, but... I was never in what you might call a steady relationship, never married. I haven't loved, have I lived? But loved, yes. Why would we go on in this Krishna consciousness if there wasn't love? Is it just some routine? What is that? There's no feeling for Krishna. There's a misconception, and this is again verging on the, the Sahajya idea, that unless you've had relationship with a woman in this world, you can't begin to understand Krishna's relationship the, the Sringaras, the Madhurya Rasa of the spiritual world. That idea is completely rejected by our Vaishnava Acharyas. One thing is like gold, spiritual love, and the other is like iron. They have many things in common, but one has quality completely superior to that of the other. Comparable in some ways, but in other ways, incomparable. 
So the, the love, the spiritual love, love for Krishna, appreciating Krishna's love for his devotees, topmost of whom is Srimati Radharani, that is enacted on the spiritual platform. It's nothing mundane. The great devotees, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Tyagdva Turna Mashesha Mandala Patishraning Sada Tuchavat, Bhutva Dina Ganesha Ko Karunaya Kopina Kanta Shrito, Gopi Bhava Risamrita Abdilahari, Kalola Magno Mahur, Vande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yago Shri Jiva Gopala Ko, they gave up family life, aristocratic life, and accepted the very ascetic life. They gave up mundane love, but they forever dived and surfaced in the waves of the feelings of the gopis of Vrindavan. So among the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, uh, Rupa and Sanatan, we don't have a record of it, but it would seem that almost suddenly they were married. Suddenly Raghunath Das was married before renouncing and coming to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jiva Goswami was a lifelong brahmachari. Raghunath Bhatta, on the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was a lifelong brahmachari. Gopal Bhatta, similarly, on the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was a lifelong brahmachari. But it wasn't that those who were married had a better understanding of, of gopi bhav, bhakti rasa, madhurya rasa, than those who had never been married. It's it's got nothing to do. It, it's almost like a different different subject. These are points to be considered very soberly by those who are on the path following Rupa Goswami. Vancha kalpa tarubhya scharkripa sindhubhya evacha patita anam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha dante nitaya chunakang padiyo nipatya kritvacha karku shatam etad aham bravimi he sadava sakala evi vihaya durad guranga chandra charane kurutanu ragaha Parivaditu jano yata tata va nanu mokaro navayang vichara yamahar hari rasa madira madati matam puvi vilotama nartama nir vishama hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari